Before we start this video, it is important to get this out of the way. This video isn't yet another video of me just shitting on Dark Souls 3, although it might seem like it. So if you don't like critical discussion, this video might not be for you. We like to talk about things in this channel and be critical. People like us for not fanboying anything and seeing the good in things. It just so happens that this is today's topic of discussion. I like Dark Souls 3, so I'm just going down on the record saying that. Now that the DLC's been out for a while, and indeed the Souls series for now's came to an end, We've made a bunch of videos on the good and bad for other Souls games, and I've wanted to make the same video for Dark Souls 3. However, with Dark Souls 3, the problem is that whenever I thought of a thing that had done well, each aspect always seemed to come with a caveat. Each good point had a simultaneous bad point that affected that aspect at the same time. This video was also made by the help of you guys, asked a bunch of your thoughts on the good and bad points of the game, and I compiled it down into this list. So, as much as the video is my opinion, most of these points are sort of backed up by other people's also. And yes, some of this will seem like nitpicking, but I'm trying to show all my complaints. I'll explain this more in the video, so let's just get into it, oh boy. Right, the Dark Souls formula is good. Like, the games are generally good. So, when I'm talking about things that the game done well, it's things that are kind of fairly unique to Dark Souls 3, things that it sort of specifically done. And the next few points are going to be things that it's specifically done that I find also have a weird bad side that doesn't make sense attached to it. Let's start with a simple one. Infusions. Infusions have never been as robust. The game has more infusion options than even Demon Souls. Coupled with the streamlined reinforcement system from the other games, it makes upgrading weapons just simple with a great selection of options. However, and boys is a big however, Unlike Dark Souls 2, you can't infuse a lot of the weapons. Basically anything to split damage, you can't infuse it. All that does is really lower variety, especially considering how terrible split damage is in the game, it makes a lot of those weapons weak to begin with. A lot of infusions are made redundant due to this. Also, it's just all, almost always better to just have a heavy, sharp, refined or raw weapon because split damage isn't optimal. Plus, poison isn't usable, the FP regen of simple infusions isn't enough to matter, in addition to this, you can't infuse casting tools or even bows, so, you know, it's really awesome, and then at the same time, it's just kind of, like, just not used. It just doesn't live up to its potential, which really fucking sucks. The NPC quests are overall much better in Dark Souls 3 than in Dark Souls 2. There aren't any more cookie-cutter quests like Lucatiel and that Scottish guy that I can't remember the name of, and some quests and NPCs even intertwine, such as Sequel and Grey Rat, Anri and Yuria. And I mean, they've done this with Peyton creating in Dark Souls 2, but you know, they brought it back and it works really well. Overall, some of the quests are great. The Anri and Yuria quests can lead to a whole different ending. However, the way some of the quests are presented is actually worse than in Dark Souls 2 somehow, as a lot of the quests involve simply going back and forth between Firelink Shrine. It makes the NPCs feel less like characters and people and more just like shit to interact with, which is a huge shame. A lot of the quests, although technically quite unique and different, also share the common theme of meet them in an area, go back to Firelink Shrine, and do nothing. So the quests are very polarising. Now understand that this is most likely a problem due to world design. Unlike in Dark Souls 1, the world isn't interconnected, so you'll never naturally go back to earlier areas, unless explicitly told you have no reason to do so. In Dark Souls 1, however, the design of the game meant you had to go naturally pass through areas a few times and you could see NPCs come and go. It made the world feel more alive, which is something Dark Souls 3 lacks. Personally, I don't find the reused personalities to be much of a problem. It's just a shame that Sequel's questline can never be as impactful as his Dark Souls 1 counterpart. Which leads us neatly on to world design, which we have discussed this point in extreme detail in our world design video. But it goes without saying, Dark Souls 3 has some pretty decent level design, especially when compared to Dark Souls 2 and some instances of the rest of the Souls series. Most areas of Dark Souls 3 have a really good consistent baseline of quality, with a lot of them having the shortcuts and the looping design that we all love from the Souls series. And there aren't really any totally shit areas in Dark Souls 3 aside from Demon Runes. However, and probably the biggest however in the video, the world design suffers a ton in Dark Souls 3. World design and level design go hand in hand, at least in, in terms of Dark Souls, as long as we're using Dark Souls 1 as a baseline. And with our last example, it's just one thing that suffers due to the linear world design of Dark Souls 3, the NPC quests. 
as I said, we did do an entire video on this topic though, so if you want a full breakdown of why the world design is bad in Dark Souls 3, then please go watch that. But to sum up, most people that played and loved Dark Souls 1 realised how important the world design was to how that game functioned. It was the essence of Dark Souls, it alone was responsible for the difficulty, the immersion, the exploration, the speedrun strategies, and just other things I'm forgetting, but Dark Souls 3 loses out on all of this. Despite each level being technically pretty great, with an average quality of levels being higher than most of the Soul series, but the world design of Dark Souls 1 made the whole world feel like one giant level, and I personally prefer that a lot. I mean, it didn't even make it feel like a level, it just made it feel like an actual place that you had to explore, you know? And the linear nature of Dark Souls 3 just makes it feel a bit more like a game. So here's a point that I actually think that a lot of you will agree with, which is weapon arts. Now, weapon arts were pretty cool. Every weapon had effectively one or two really big flashy attacks or a cool thing that it could do that gives you an edge in combat. Not really much more to say, just overall a really nice addition. However, in Dark Souls 2, what would have been the parry button is now for weapon arts, so you can't parry with most weapons anymore. Which is okay, but you're not given the choice. Plus, weapon arts are really, really should have been customisable for each weapon. It would have given the game much more variety and strategy because really weapon arts are supposed to be a tactical attack, but most people just pick whatever weapon gives the most damage output. It would have been amazing if weapon arts were essentially spells for weapons that you could equip to a weapon. Each weapon could have two slots that you can equip arts to, with some weapons have unique arts just for them that you can't unequip. Given how objectively better this system is, it really pains me to think of how much of a missed opportunity weapon arts were, despite how good that they actually are. Now, don't get me wrong, the weapons themselves in Dark Souls 3 are a lot of fun, a lot of effort into making some of them. I say some because a lot of the animations are copy and paste from Dark Souls 1, but I mean that doesn't make them any less good, do you know what I mean? It's just a shame there isn't as much variety like there is in Dark Souls 2. But given how all weapons have weapon arts, you can kind of let them away with it I suppose. In addition to this, left hand weapon functionality is gone, so you can't even dual wield effectively, which is actually unforgivable that your left handed weapon doesn't get rolling or running attacks at least. I would even accept some weapons having a parry or a block with the L2 while equipped to the left hand with most normal attacks being assigned to L1, but nope, no such luck. It seems to me that weapon arts were the reason why power stancing was removed from Dark Souls 3 from Dark Souls 2. I think that both systems can be a thing at the same time. It just sucks because it lowers build variety and I think we can all agree that that sucks. Thankfully, they made getting a red eye orb a piece of cake in Dark Souls 3. Which is great, as it means getting to invade people for PvP before the DLC arena was fast and simple. Unlike in previous Souls games, in Dark Souls 2, there was no red eye orb, and in Dark Souls 1, getting the red eye orb was a colossal pain in the cunt. This is the most prime example of many little quality of life improvements that the Dark Souls 3 done. However, as controversial as it will sound to some, invasions are fucking cancer. Invasions are stacked so highly against the invader that there's just so little fun to be had when actually invading. Now, I know this is a point of contention, so I'm going to link a video in the description that explains way better than I can the problems with invasions. Seriously, so definitely go watch that before even commenting on this point. It's just a shame that they let you invade so easily, given how shitty invading is. And I understand that it is incredibly subjective, and again, like I said, I know a lot of people are just going to be like, No, no, of course the invader has to be at a disadvantage. That's not what I'm saying. So just go watch that video and that will explain everything and you'll see at least the angle that I'm coming from. A huge improvement over Dark Souls 2 is the quality of bosses. Of course you need to look at them in context of the games as each Souls game handles them a little differently. For instance if you put any Dark Souls 2 boss in Dark Souls 3 it would just be the fucking worst boss in the game. But you know given how Dark Souls 2 handles differently it makes the boss feel different. But overall, Dark Souls 3 comes out on top, I'd say. When you include the DLCs, the number of great bosses for Dark Souls 3 goes up a lot as well. But, you know, then again, every DLC has great bosses, so that's kind of redundant. The, the point is, unlike Dark Souls 2, most of the bosses aren't a piss take. However, and this is probably the smallest to ever on the list, there are some bosses in Dark Souls 3 that are abhorrently awful. Jorm, Curse Rotted Greatwood, 
being the least of the bad in my opinion. But Deacons, Walner, Ancient Wyvern. And I also wanted to say the Crystal Sage, but that's the worst of the meh bosses. It's not a bad boss. But anyway, all these bosses that I've mentioned are fucking atrocious. And given the general quality of Dark Souls 3 bosses, they just stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, in saying that, every Souls game has this problem to some extent, but it doesn't make it any less of a problem for Dark Souls 3. And it is a smaller of all the problems, you know, it's a small problem, but, you know, again, you know, of all the good bosses that it does have, and of all the decent bosses that it has, it does just have this one group of just excessively, painfully terrible bosses. <laughs> They kept equipment weight as its own stat, and I hope if they ever remake Dark Souls 1 they'll do that as well, because it's so incredibly important. Something that people never really seem to appreciate, because we see comments all the time about saying that they wish they'd put equip weight back with endurance, and you really don't want that. Equip weight being its own stat means that tanky builds don't inherently receive more stamina, which helps balance out the whole, what if a heavy build has a small fast weapon dynamic giving them crazy amounts of swings and a fast roll but with lots of defence. It just adds to build variety in general, means you need to think a little bit more, adds to game balancing. It's a shame they essentially made what feels like a 25% roll in Dark Souls 1 achievable as 70% equip weight, but you know that's a whole different problem. If you want I can make a video detailing about all the different reasons why build variety is limited in Dark Souls 3. But as I've said before, the gradual scale of rolling thresholds Dark Souls 2 had was the best system for rolls in my opinion, as it was less of a case of put on as you know the best armour you have that takes you up to 70% and go with it, and more of a put on as much armour as you're comfortable with, trading defence for mobility on a gradient instead of a hard cutoff point. But the point is, is that the equipment weight is still there, and that is just objectively better than Dark Souls 1. And it's just good that it's there. So, you know, a good point, but you know, again, it still has its niggly issues which kind of surround it. So next on the list is quality of life improvements. And there's a lot of these little improvements in Dark Souls 3, and they're all great, and they should all be celebrated. And it just, you know, makes going back to play the earlier games that little bit more bothersome. It's just such a shame that for each good thing, there's kind of like a bad side to that aspect of the game. But, you know, something that about all of these issues is... The problem that I have is not with the thing itself, it's things that kind of surround the thing. So, you know, Firelink Shrine is a great hub, it's a, it's a re I really like Firelink Shrine. But then it relates straight back to the world design point. As great as the shrine is for levelling up and upgrading your gear, as everything is in you know, just one nice place, we still need to go back through two fucking loading screens just to level up and reinforce gear. Why are they still peddling this shit? Is it just to make us care about the Firekeeper or some shit, you know, to just make us familiar with it by forcing us to interact with her? There are other less intrusive ways of making you care about characters, and you know, this is not one of them. It's just such a shame that for all the throwbacks to Dark Souls 1, they miss a very important one that everybody's been calling out for, is, you know, the interconnected world, or specifically in this case, leveling up at a fucking bonfire. Like, why can we not do that? Like, I don't care if there's a fucking lore reason behind it. Nobody gives half a shit if, oh, the firekeeper's the only thing that can level you up. You know what, just, who cares? It's still two loading screens. You've also got Homer Bones that now let you warp straight back to the shrine, which would have been, you know, a great addition to Dark Souls 2 or Bloodborne. Again, the bad side of this is having the shrine in the first place, but given the shrine does exist, it's a great bonus. Switching between covenants, this was also a great thing in Dark Souls 3. It meant you didn't have to go and request absolution and change covenants like in Dark Souls 1. That was bothersome and didn't really add anything to the game, honestly, other than giving you sin points, but you know th that could have been handled way differently and it was unnecessary. Being able to switch in the fly was cool features that let you, you know, pick the online interaction that you wanted to play. You know, which, you know, it's quick and simple, however, Almost all of the Covenants in Dark Souls 3 are garbage. If you want to know more, I'll link our Comprehensive Covenants video in the description. And I swear to god this video isn't just about a fucking link to other videos, it is an overall bigger point, but, you know, we've covered that specific topic, so you know, you might as well go watch that if you feel, you know, like you want other shit to watch. Before we end on a high note, I'm gonna go over the objectively bad points. Now this is something that I've not covered in any other video either, it's a... Uh, Things that are literally just bad about Dark Souls 3. Uh, this would have been in a separate video, I suppose, but you know, I might as well put it in this video because I'm also going to talk about the things that I genuinely really like about Dark Souls 3, just in a vacuum. 
things that don't have any bad points attached to it. I'm going to leave that till the end. But, you know, just for now, we're going to go with once killing a boss, you can't be invaded nor summon phantoms. This could easily have been fixed and, you know, I kind of slightly get why it was done, but I still don't see why an opt-in or an opt-out method wasn't implemented for folks that want it. In addition to this, you can pop an ember and become embered at any point. This means that you can do it outside of a boss and forgo the risk-reward of I'm embered and now open to online play. You should have at least had to be embered at a bonfire. In Dark Souls 2, you can be invaded at any point, so being able to use a human effigy at any point made sense. But in terms of embering, it just means that you can completely avoid ever being invaded, like due to how the system works. Which I think is kind of not unfair, but you know, it takes away from the whole kind of Dark Souls vibe of like, oh, you know, if you want something, you need to pay a price for it. New Game Plus is something that Dark Souls 3 didn't do very well either. It takes all the worst aspects of New Game Plus and like none of the good ones. It locks like rings to at least New Game Plus 2 without really delivering a bigger challenge or a mix up of enemy placements or anything like that. I mean, personally, I don't really care about New Game Plus. This is more of a point that other people came up with, but I'd rather the base game be a better experience if I had to pick between the two. So overall, this is a small point, but I suppose it's still relevant. Because of the increased speed of the game and general other small mechanical aspects, magic and bows are really just kind of unusable in PvP. It's not that they're utterly terrible, it's just from a practical standpoint, it's just easier and more effective to use a weapon than spells as your damage output. And I get it, right, you might wreck people all the time with your casting build, but it's hard to deny that spells aren't easy to dodge or counter. Build variety is another thing. The DLCs have obviously helped this somewhat, but when compared to Dark Souls 2 or 1, the build variety has been really kind of gimped due to how unusable certain things are in PvP. Plus, the 70% rolling threshold is added to this amongst a lot of other things. As I've said, if you want to make a video on all the reasons build variety is quite low, I, I will do it. Um, also, the removal of the Twin Blades weapon class is uh, both of those points that gimps build variety and it's just an objectively step back. Um, yeah, another thing I've spoken about is how defense works in Dark Souls 3. The armor you wear doesn't really do much in terms of how much defense it actually gives you. This has been changed somewhat since the DLC and patches armor means a little bit more. But it's just yet another thing that lowers build variety in Dark Souls 3. Frankly, I feel like your armor should be the primary thing involved in your defense, but for Dark Souls 3, it's simply your vitality. This is good for fashion, but it means that you you know, what you wear doesn't technically really matter all that much. Again, got a few videos on this topic, so you can go watch those ones as well. So, finally on the list of objectively bad points about Dark Souls 3 is the game is really highly derivative, as well as being weirdly, oddly short, whilst having a huge portion of its content ripped from Dark Souls 1 and 2. I feel like one of the key aspects of how Dark Souls 3 turned out the way it did was almost the complete ignorance of how good things in Dark Souls 2 were done, the things that were done good, and instead thrown endless member berries from Dark Souls 1 down our throats. Oh, remember that set of armour? Remember this area? Remember this NPC? Oh, we made all the NPCs you love again! Instead of taking the heart and soul of Dark Souls 1 and using what made it great and refining it, they gave us a solid game but it's pretending to be Dark Souls 1 by flashing incredibly superficial aspects of it at us and, you know, hoping you don't notice that it certainly isn't Dark Souls 1. Even the DLCs have items from previous games. Although, please don't get me wrong, most, if not all, of the DLC items are fucking amazing. Dark Souls 3 has 87 full sets of armour, compared to Dark Souls 2, 106. Of which, 36 of them appear in previous games, I'm very much aware of quality over quantity, but it's such a step back from Dark Souls 2 because that had double the amount of armors from Dark Souls 1. And a lot of them were amazing, like Dark Souls 2, a lot of the armors, I'm, I'm upset that they're not in Dark Souls 3. And the same applies to weapons in Dark Souls 3 as well, 194 versus 223 for Dark Souls 2. And I will say that Dark Souls 3 has a lot more samey feeling weapons compared to Dark Souls 2. That might just be me though, but I do feel that that is the case. Despite having more content than Dark Souls 1, the game is still somehow shorter, which isn't necessarily bad, again harking back to quality over quantity, because overall the game is better in a lot of ways over Dark Souls 2, maybe I just feel somewhat shortchanged. 
It's just a shame that Dark Souls 3 misses out on having its own identity and instead stands up on trying to be what Dark Souls 1 was. Ultimately, this does sound like there is an overwhelming amount of bad with this game, but really aside from all these specific points, Dark Souls 3 is a Souls game and Souls games are bloody good games. The challenge, the exploration, the combat, the systems, all make a really fun game overall. You know, just the, the gameplay flow is, is just a testament to how great the formula is. When a game can have this many flaws but still be a great game. So again, I'm not trying to shit over Dark Souls 3, just trying to start a discussion. So now I'm going to list off a few great points for Dark Souls 3 that have no negative sides to them and these are things that I really enjoy about it and think that it done really well specifically, especially over the other games. Something that basically everybody can agree on is the music. The music is good, like really good. Some pretty standout tracks which were great. They really add to each battle, the score gets a 10 out of 10 simply for the fucking remix of Gwyn's theme at the end. The game's music is one of the few unique things about it. It was fairly different from all the other Souls games really, especially when the music was like really grand and on a much larger scale. It reminds me of that hidden track from Dark Souls 1, which was one that was in the trailer, but nowhere else in the game. So yeah, it was uh, a lot like that and that song's like one of my favourite Dark Souls tracks, so I was really was, uh, quite pleased with the soundtrack, yeah. The controls in the combat are like tight as fuck, which makes the game feel really nice to play. You get a good sense of control over your character, which makes things like accidentally rolling off a cliff way less likely to happen. As much as I personally prefer a slightly slower game, the extra speed makes some encounters quite tense as you sometimes need to rely on split seconds decisions and like twitch reflexes. People say it makes the game boil down a lot of R1 spam, but that's not really strictly true, is it? I mean. No one complained about that in Bloodborne, so I don't really see why it applies to this, especially when it's n not really the case anyway. The addition of poise when they put it in really did help the game, it adds to some diversity of the game and made heavy armour somewhat viable, and now you can actually benefit from heavy weapons and heavy armour. Game balancing seemed to be f fairly okay, few personal niggles here and there, and the game balancing in terms of PvE by the way. And of course my previous skill rolling over from the other Dark Souls games probably detracts from the overall experience for me, but the difficulty was fairly decent. Dark Souls 3 has gave me some genuine challenge with some of it and I'm, I'm glad about that, especially because the challenge in Dark Souls 2 was a bit odd, uh, where the challenge should have meant something with bosses, the bosses were really easy, but then the challenge came from just like excessive amounts of enemies being in certain areas. So, you know, it, it wasn't really a challenge as one would n generally like it. Uh, a, a strictly PvP related point here, but no instant backstabs. It, they really couldn't have nailed it any harder, actually, and thank fuck that they did. The footage alone that you should see should be enough to illustrate my point, but not being teleported about getting one shot is really nice. I suppose this is also a testament to the better netcode as well. Graphics are of course really nice, it's not just the graphics so much as the level of detail in the levels, all the little bits of clutter and the shattered tiles and the rocks and the, the, the way the things aren't at like right angles and stuff, it really makes you feel less like you're in a level and more like in a place, although of course nowhere near as much to the extent of Dark Souls 1 but it's definitely um, much better than Dark Souls 2, that's for sure, which was uh, kind of played with a lot of right angles at times and things felt not quite as organic as it could, but Dark Souls 3 doesn't really suffer from that. Uh, a few other small points as well, the charging of power attacks, which is something they brought from Bloodborne, it's a small but a really a, a change that I genuinely really appreciated, I feel like that's something that should have been in the games all the way from Demon Souls, actually. Uh, and the arena. Now I suppose this does technically have a negative that it's locked to the DLC, so it automatically splits the player base, but frankly, it, oh, and also I hate that it's somewhat hidden in terms of how the fuck you get it, but you cannot deny that they hit the nail on the head with exactly how the arena ne needed to be. On PC at least, it's always populated and I've never encouraged a single hacker either. So it just the arena is a lot of fun and it is just, it lets you play multiplayer matches, you know, like 3v3s and brawls and duels, it is just perfect, frankly. So this brings me to the end of another video. This pretty much covers all of my thoughts about Dark Souls 3 in, in fairly broad general terms. I mean, I could sit here for fucking hours deconstructing it, but this covers the big headings about what I specifically like and dislike. 
Now, just to reiterate, the core formula of Dark Souls 3 I enjoy a lot. The challenge, the exploration, the combat, the bosses, the pacing, the I'm basically a 3D Castlevania game, is all something I'm a big fan of. So all these points are basically on top of the core gameplay. As ever, I just want to thank every patron on Patreon for your incredibly generous support. I genuinely couldn't do this without the support of everyone, and not just the patrons, but just everyone that's still watching and just keeping me going. If you want to help the channel, and believe me it really does help, you can find the link in the description. I also just want to give a small apology for the gap in content recently. I got a lot more shifts in work than I'm used to, so I wasn't able to make much time, hence where Patreon is helpful for this. But, you know, we've plenty more videos on the way with boss countdowns, area countdowns, and of course we will finish the ultimate guide for Dark Souls 3. It's just the DLCs are tough as fuck, and coupled with lack of time, it's made hard to put effort into that. We also have a new series that I'm sure you guys will love coming up soon, where we need your help for it as well, so stay tuned for that. Anyway guys, it's been a pleasure, and I will see you in the next video.